This is a breadboard. Breadboard is just a plastic housing with holes in it that contains rows of conductive slots configured in a way that makes temporary circuit construction and prototyping easy. This is the back side of the breadboard with the conductive metal rows shown that correspond with these rows of holes. So this is your positive rail right here. This blue one would be your negative rail, which corresponds with this one. And same on the bottom, this would be your ground, and this would be your positive. So you have a positive and negative on both sides, which makes it easy to connect, connect components with both the positive and negative of the breadboard. These vertical slots right here will break out the components that are plugged in right here into these rows. So you could easily connect components effectively to the pins of whatever components are plugged into these, into this middle section right here. This is an example of how a component is broken out on the breadboard. This is just an integrated circuit. And when you plug it in, these pins on the integrated circuit right here conduct with these rows. Now, these, these lines right here just show the conductive row rows uh, underneath the breadboard so that when you plug the IC in, it is electrically connected to these rows right here. Whatever you plug into these holes will connect effectively to the pins on this IC. And same with this resistor. You plug this resistor in, you are connecting it to, to the conductor under all these holes right here. So whatever you connect, so if you were to connect a wire from here to there, you are connecting this resistor, the side of this resistor, to that pin of the IC. If you connect this pin, this hole, if you plug a wire into this hole, and you put the other wire in that hole, you're connecting this pin of the IC to ground. If you plug a wire into here and then the other side there, you're effectively connecting that pin of the IC to the positive rail of the circuit. Here's an example of connecting some components together. Here's your IC, and if you wanted to connect this side of this resistor to that pin of the IC, you simply take advantage of this conductive row there you plug a jumper wire from here to there, take advantage of that conductive row to route this side of the jumper wire to that side of the resistor. Connecting this side of the resistor to that pin of the IC is just a matter of it's already plugged in and you have it activates that conductive row. You have this jumper wire, you plug it into any one of these holes in that vertical section and it connects to that side of the resistor. Then you plug it in right there which connects it to this conductive row and effectively that pin of the IC. Over here, if you wanna connect this pin to VCC or the positive rail right there, you simply just plug a jumper wire from there to there, anywhere on that vertical row, and it connects to that pin of the IC. Same with this side of the, of the IC. If you wanna connect this pin to ground, you simply would plug a jumper wire from there to there. Here's that same breadboard next to its equivalent schematic. As you can see, we've created this circuit right here by connecting these pins of each component to each other through these conductive rows and jumper wires. This is a very simple schematic. This would only take a, literally a few minutes to put together, but given the capability of a breadboard, you can create very, very complicated schematics as well, you can cascade breadboards together and, and essentially have building blocks for very, very complicated circuits and systems. There's a few examples of breadboards here that have been put together based on schematics from a fairly simple transistor switch, relay driver. This is actually a, a D flip-flop made from transistors. This is an A-stable multivibrator, and this is a a multiplexed LED display demo. So in summary, breadboards are easy and intuitive to use. Once you know they're laid out, you can easily build your prototypes based on schematic diagrams. And you can build from very simple 
circuits up to very complicated circuits and systems using breadboards. There are certain types of circuits that you probably don't want to use a breadboard for, and those would typically be higher voltage circuits, higher current circuits, and high frequency circuits. But for testing, prototyping, and learning electronics, they can be a very powerful tool. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. For more information about this project, as well as recommended breadboarding equipment, best practices, and safety tips, please go to breadboardcircuits.com.